Maundy Thursday is a reference to Christ giving a new commandment. The word Maundy comes from the Latin word for commandment. In the earlier years, Maundy Thursday observances included a ceremonial foot washing to imitate how Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. And our, our sermon for this evening comes from the book of Luke. And would you please rise for the reading of the gospel? Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 23. And when the hour came, he reclined at table, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. <clears throat> and he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of him who betrays, who betrays me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man goes as, as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to question one another, which of them it could be who was going to do this. Let us pray. Father, <clears throat> we know this book is your word. We know it is truth. Holy Spirit, be with us. Be with me as I give this sermon. Be with us people as we hear it. Help us to understand it. Help us to feel your love. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated. So think about the personal dinner with Jesus, the Last Supper. What a special gift to sit with Jesus to break bread. The disciples were there for the ritual Passover meal, and little did they know that this was to be the last time that they would share the Passover meal with Jesus, personally, face to face, here on earth. As we come to the altar, to the communion table, we ought to feel special as well. Jesus gave his body and his blood for us as the final perfect sacrifice. He took on the sin of the whole world, and that includes you and me. At the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. And then the cup. He said, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. As we receive this, his body and his blood, yes, we are special. The presence of God is here right now. As you receive his body and his blood, Jesus is here giving himself to you as a reminder of how he died on the cross and how he forgives you of your sins. If only you receive his forgiveness. Just say, yes, Jesus, I love you. Please forgive me and receive his gift. The memory of the Last Supper goes on forever, every time we receive communion. The Jewish people had been celebrating the Passover meal 1,500 years before Jesus' time here on earth. This was a celebration of when God saved his people from captivity in Egypt. On that night, salvation had been sealed by the blood of a, by the blood of a slain lamb, the angel of death passed over the homes of those that were marked with the blood of the Lamb on the doorpost. Here in Uppsala, we don't typically generally celebrate Passover, although there are Jewish people that still do. It is easy for us to forget the main course of the last meal that Jesus shared with his disciples. It was a Passover lamb. They were eating the flesh of a lamb in remembrance of God's saving work for his people 1,500 years earlier. And now, this beautiful picture, let's look at this picture for a minute. And I would like to point out that the people are sitting at a table on what appears to be chairs. They aren't really, they don't look like they're reclining. And this is not really relevant to the story, but it's one of the two things I would like to point out. 
And this painting is a pretty well-known painting by Da Vinci. I have the very same painting in our kitchen at home. I'm sure many people do. It's a beautiful painting. But if you notice, they are not reclining, as it says in the Bible. In the, in the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 14, it says right there, And when the hour came, he reclined at table and the apostles with him. Doesn't look like they're reclining to me. Now, this is a point of how many things maybe are not true that you hear in the news and or publications or of the such. Always do your own research. It is still a nice picture, but always do your research and find out things like this. Now, further with the picture, look at the picture again. And do you notice how the, how the disciples are pointing at one another and they're doing this and they're doing that? They're fussing and they're fighting, they're arguing. And it says in Luke chapter 22, verse 24, it says, A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. Now this part is true. No, they're not reclining, but yes, they are arguing. So the picture is half right. Take that for what it's worth, but that's what all this pointing and stuff is all about. They actually were arguing amongst themselves. The disciples were arguing about who would be more important with Jesus in heaven. If they had only known how special they were right now, eating the Passover meal with Jesus, this was to be the Last Supper. How do you suppose they would have been acting then if they had known this? How would you act? if you had the opportunity to share the Last Supper with Jesus. Now, Jesus had many followers, 20, 30, 40. In Luke chapter 10, it tells us how at one time he sent out 72. So he had many followers. And yet, these 12 in this picture were very special. Since the day that Jesus chose each one, and each one chose to follow, Jesus had a plan for each one. He taught them and they learned much during their time with him. And now here they are sharing the Passover meal with Jesus, which will be the Last Supper. What a privilege it is for them to be there with him. Now, God loves us, not for what we've done, but Jesus gave himself for us. He did not expect payment in return, but only to love him, receive his love, receive his forgiveness. Just say to God, I love you, and I know you love me. The love of Jesus gives us courage to serve him. Now, what if Jesus' love for us failed him before he got to the upper room in this picture? The 12 disciples were arguing amongst each other which one of them was, was going to be the most important to Jesus, and here they are arguing, but Jesus loved them anyway. Jesus showed agape love. He did not turn away. Even today he continues to show agape love. He has not stopped loving you or me to this day. Now at this time, Jesus is about to give his life for them and for us. He is about to be executed. If his love would have failed for them and for us, if his love for them and for us would have failed, we would be lost. Now, after this, Jesus removed his robe, he girded himself with a towel, he got down on his knees and washed the feet of the twelve disciples. They were arguing with each other, acting very undisciplined, and yet Jesus showed his love for them. He became their servant. As they are arguing, he overlooks their sinful nature and lovingly washes their feet. As he moved through the disciples' feet, the towel got dirtier and dirtier. The same hands that were to be pierced with nails, the hands of God, are now washing their feet. As a congregation, we have just recently read through the book of Leviticus. We learned about the many offerings that the people had to bring to Moses and to Aaron to be sacrificed to redeem the people of their sins. Many special times, many special directions that needed to be followed to the letter. There was a burnt offering, which was a male without blemish, a bull, a sheep, a goat, depending on the circumstance. There was a grain offering. There was a peace offering from the herd, male or female, without blemish. From the flock, male or female, or a lamb or a goat. 
or a sin offering for unintentional sins, a bull without blemish, or a guilt offering, a ram without blemish, on and on and on. The list just goes on and on. These were the instructions from God as he led his people out of Egypt and on their way to the promised land. On and on went these sacrifices, hundreds of years, even thousands of years. Now, what Jesus was showing at the Last Supper was that now there is a new plan. Instead of a sacrifice of a lamb or a goat or a bull, Jesus is now the final perfect sacrifice. He said, remember, at the Last Supper, he said, remember. We are to remember always the gift of life that Jesus offers to us as he gave himself. When we gather at the altar to receive communion, we are sharing in the same body and blood of Jesus as he shared with his disciples on that evening of the Last Supper. During that evening chain of events, after Judas had gone out to do his deed, Jesus gave a new commandment. In the book of John, in chapter 13, verse 34, Jesus said, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. In the flurry and the hurry and the worry of life, just stop. Just take time to be with Jesus. Recognize and realize the love of Jesus. Jesus will never tempt you to sin. Jesus was and is without sin. Jesus only shows love. Jesus is also all about forgiveness. Jesus gave himself as the final perfect sacrifice to offer forgiveness of all our sins. Yes, Jesus loves you, and he loves me. Through the forgiveness Christ offers through his body and blood in the Holy Supper, he prepares your place at the heavenly feast. The bread and wine you taste now give you a foretaste of heaven itself. Do not let the Lord's Supper be just one more thing that you go to church and just do. No, please linger at the Lord's table. Meditate on its blessings and on the comfort. Jesus stands knocking this day at the door of your church. With repentant joy, open and eat with him at his feast. In the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verses 19 and 20, Jesus said, Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline, so be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him, and he with me. Amen. <laughs>